As we enter the final years of PS4, I've pondered over the life cycle, and while it did incredibly well and we saw a lot of fantastic games, I don't think I can really shake off the feeling that for me personally, I think I had a better time with the PS3. And to be honest, that's not the PS4's fault because in theory, I probably should have enjoyed the PS4 more. Which, by the way, I find these two to be easier to compare given they're both HD internet connected consoles. I find the comparison of PS4 versus anything older to be a bit weird. At least for this conversation because this isn't totally about the games. Now that plays a part, sure, but one of the things that I really miss about the PS3 is how it was my media hub for the years of 2006 to 2013. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed the fact that I could manage and store files on the PS3 directly. I loved going through photos, music, and videos on my PS3 back in the day, and I had tons of music videos, movies, and TV shows saved on it. And sure, this is when streaming wasn't around or it wasn't super relevant, but I do miss that I couldn't do these very things on the PS4 right away in 2013. And then, once a proper media player app came to the PS4, it really felt like a half-hearted attempt. The UI of the app is pretty bland, and you can't save the files locally to your PS4, so I never really even bothered to use it that much. Which kind of brings me to the other thing that I missed about the PS3, and that was the XMB, which is short for Cross Media Bar. This is the basic user interface of the PS3, and while it has its problems, I found it to be very intuitive. And just as a quick history lesson, the XMB doesn't live on just PS3 or PSP, but it was also used on many Sony Bravia TVs, and even the PSX. And no, not the PlayStation 1, the PSX, a hybrid PS2 DVR system that never saw a release outside of Japan. So Sony has had a long history of using this UI in many of their devices. Now yes, I know, the XMB lives a new life on the PS4's dynamic menu, but what you'll notice is that the PS4 uses the XMB only to navigate you to new screens. What I loved about the original XMB is that it used almost no screen navigations. The second you ticked over to a new category, your content would immediately load and display, and even when you folder up your content a bit, it never feels like you're being taken away or moved to another menu. You're still there, in the XMB, ready to back out in just a few clicks and go right back to the main category you were viewing. It was great, and I love the simplicity of it as well. Nowadays UIs are moving away from the visualization backgrounds and more towards highlighting the content in giant picturesque displays which you could argue is much better to have the content front and center, but I rather enjoyed the control and viewpoint I have over my content on the PS3. And truth be told, going back to a PS3 today in 2019 is rough. The XMB is horrendously slow by today's standards, and the PS4 is quick and snappy when navigating its UI, but a part of me really wishes that I could take the power of current hardware and just apply it to that older XMB so I don't have to sit there waiting 10 plus years for my content to load. Which again, honestly highlights why PS4 should easily be more liked today. Not only is it just miles faster than a PS3, but it brought so many features that PS3 wasn't capable of. Things like cross-game chat and suspending your games are fantastic features that PS4 owners could really only dream of back in the day. Which is why I genuinely think this isn't so much the PS4's fault than it is just me having a bit of Stockholm Syndrome back then. I enjoyed the PS3 for what it was and wasn't too upset to find that there was a feature the system didn't have. But one trend that is certainly not present in the 8th generation of video game consoles is demos. Nowadays, they're far and few between, and I miss having a demo available on the PlayStation Store for most games. Hell, I even reminisce when the PS3 didn't let you download your games in the background. When I got a PS3 day one with no games, I spent the whole first day letting it sit there, download all the demos from the PlayStation Store. It was terrible, but it was awesome at the same time. I had tons of stuff to play while being poor from dropping $600 on the system, while also semi-regretting not just selling it on eBay for an easy $1,500 back in 2006. But when it comes down to it, I also miss the games. PS3 had a great library, and sure, early on it was a bit rough with the shoddy ports because developers had a tough time developing on PS3, but it was fun to watch it slowly get better, which it did. Eventually, it started to receive most of the third-party exclusives the Xbox 360 got early on, and better yet, Sony's Worldwide Studio started to pump out some pretty incredible games.
Games like Uncharted and Resistance were crazy at the time given their developers were walking away from cartoony 3D platformers. It was as if this new era of PlayStation was starting and it oddly aligned well with Sony's weird marketing, showing the PS3 off as this powerhouse adults only machine. And there was also Warhawk, a game which made a few headlines in the day for being one of the first few games to be offered on disc and digital download day one. But F that noise, the game was awesome, and I wish it was remastered today on PS4. You can even shoehorn in a battle royale mode to please the children of today, I just want that game to be popular again. And if you were around at the time, you know the kind of magic Little Big Planet made. It was a dramatic shift from your typical bro shooter that instilled creativity and fun. Remember when Sony used it during their 2008 E3 press conference to make their sales announcements fun, while at the same time demonstrating what was capable in the game? So far, 2008 has been the kind of year that makes me proud to be in the gaming industry. With three powerful platforms, we have the industry equivalent of oceanfront property with a commanding control of retail shelf space. And for the year-to-date numbers through the month of June, we've sold more than 1.8 million PS3s here in the United States, and more than 1.6 million PSPs. And let's get real, PlayStation Home. And no, I'm not saying this was a reason to miss PS3, but more so it's build-up, false hope, release, and eventual failure. It was an interesting concept that I'm sure Sony spent a tremendous amount on. In theory, it made sense. A virtual space where you could meet up with friends, play small games, dance, launch actual PS3 games together from your apartments. It was like a very early GTA Online, but instead of all the crime, it was just a boring guy or gal living a regular life. And I say that loosely given the amount of bubble machines that you'd see getting placed around haphazardly like it was its own religion. But in actuality, in the end of days of home, I remember checking it one last time, and I was surprised at what I saw. Every profile I checked had almost no trophies. Every conversation I observed were tight-knit groups of friends. And for these people, this was probably their sole reason of using a PlayStation 3. They likely spent a lot of money on virtual clothing items, and never did much outside of talking and hanging out. Probably not what Sony was aiming for, but that was certainly something special in its own way. I also really enjoyed the local multiplayer games the PS3 offered, which unfortunately today isn't nearly as prevalent as it was 10 years ago. Speaking of which, there's a few things from then that you just don't see anymore. Or at the very least, they just aren't really relevant anymore. I loved playing Sangstar and using the real microphones it was supplied with. I loved the quirky and totally dumb PlayStation Eye games. They were always small experiences that never took up too much of your time, and sometimes they weren't even fun and more of a toy, but you still messed with them anyways. And then there was Eye of Judgment, a game that was probably tragically ahead of its time, and something you'd never see today. A completely original card game that used the PlayStation Eye and real cards to summon monsters on screen. All of these things you don't really see today, and for a good reason, they'd probably be total commercial failures now, but I'll be damned if they weren't fun and interesting for their time. Summon. Attack. And now we come to my final point, which is that, for me personally, I'm just at a different time in my life where I'm not afforded the opportunity to play games nearly as much as I could back then. Between a semi-demanding job, social life, and the occasional YouTube video, I don't get to play as much, and when I look back at my trophies for example, it really shows. Most of my Platinums were PS3 games, and a lot of them I look back and think, Good lord, I definitely would not have the time or patience to do that again. And that's not a bad thing. I remember those times fondly, and they were great games, and many of them offered a very difficult challenge that in the end made me want to almost kick a small child, but they were very satisfying to accomplish. The only real bad thing about this is that my PS4 backlog is so long that I try to pretend it's not there. But it is. It's there. Watching me. Heckling me. Laughing at my lack of time. And it hurts. But, you know, sometimes you make a YouTube video about it and not actually play them and then wonder, is it my lack of time or my inability to manage it? 
And then that's where we stop asking questions and get to the end of the video, concluding that PS3 had a lot of things that PS4 simply doesn't. And for better or worse, that's what made me enjoy it more. But once again, I really don't think that's the PS4's fault, as I just didn't get to play nearly as many games. But hopefully I can rectify that in the next year. I think we can all agree that more video games is never a bad thing. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't yet, subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates here on YouTube. That's it for me in this video, I'll see you all in the next one. You take it easy.